PCP is very explosive. Ooh, mommy. That feels good. If you're from LA and you just so happen to be Mexican, then odds are that you probably heard of a little gang film called Blood In, Blood Out. And if you haven't seen it or aren't Mexican, then luckily for you, I'm about to explain the whole story. So sit back, relax, warm up them burritos, and kiss your abuelita goodnight, because it's time to find out why every Mexican has seen Blood In, Blood Out. The film starts off with the main character of Miklo returning to his home of East LA after getting into a fight with his dad in Vegas and running away. He gets to his old house and tells his mom about the whole issue, but it's a bit risky since Miklo is on parole until his birthday. Or as Miklo said it, seis dias mis cumple años. And let's pause for a bit to talk about Miklo's actor's Spanish accent, because it's like they couldn't even cast a dude who looks slightly like a teenager, or a Mexican that could actually speak Spanish. So they said, screw it, and got a grown ass man who looks 30 and can't speak Spanish to play a Spanish speaking teenager. I mean seriously, this dude looks like a middle aged accountant from Burbank. But I'm just teasing, his Spanish gets better throughout the film, and he later plays a middle aged man, so it all works out. His mom takes Miklo to stay at her older sister's house and she's like this sweet generic abuelita type but a bit creepy and flirty with Miklo, I'm not gonna lie. He then meets up with his old carnal and cousin Paco and he's like this try hard macho type and teases Miklo a lot for being half Mexican and half white. <laughs> They go run some errands and Miklo sees that another street gang, the Three P's or the Tres Puntos, have been tagging on their turf since he has been gone. And Paco and him basically just rile each other up. <laughs> They meet up with Baco's stepbrother Cruz who's like an up and coming painter along with Baco's and Cruz's half brother and they basically all say what's up to each other until Cruz's dad and Baco's old buff ass stepdad presses Baco. You eat and you sleep in my house and as long as you do, don't you talk to me like that. Tenga respeto, entiendes? You're not my dad! You also want to hear something! And damn, this fool's stepdad is f***ing jacked as hell. What the hell are they putting in his food? It's probably that same steroid tainted Mexico meat that Canelo was talking about when he got caught. Later that night, they catch some three peas, aka tres puntos, tagging on their turf again. And Paco racially teases Miklo into doing something, and he does. Which kind of starts off an even bigger turf war. You're white, I say? No, I'm not. Then do something, fool. Okay. You're about to look on! The next day, they're at Cruz's art competition where his painting wins first place and a full scholarship to an artistic school. He thanks them and then shouts out his own gang, the Vato Locos. And later that night, they hang out at Cruz's party. They give Miklo his stripes and ink for warding off the three Ps. But after that, they all go out and celebrate. And Cruz is about to get lucky with a girl. But right before he truly gets lucky, he gets jumped by some three Ps and they hit him with that old Dark Knight Bane break back attack. I was wondering what would break first, Crucito, your barrio or your back? <laughs> He's taken to the hospital and it doesn't look too good, so the Vatos Locos plot their revenge against the Tres Puntos for Crucito. And the next day, the three Ps are celebrating their new turf. But right there at that time, Baco and his gang ambush them. But kinda give them a fair chance at the same time? I don't know, it's kinda hard. This dude's holding a gun. How's that any fair? Baco beats up the main leader of the three Ps, Spider, and hits him with some weird ass insults. Should not have done that to my brother Crucito, I say. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? I mean, what is he supposed to say to that? You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? No, I don't, Camel Toe. Continuing on, Paco beats him up and leaves him with a Vatos Loco mark across his chest and then tries to end him, but Miklo stops him. However, Spider shoots at them when they're leaving and have their backs turned like a bitch after they let him live. I mean, honestly, that's some whack shit. I get it that he's mad and all, but he kinda got off easy for breaking Cruz's back. 
It's just a grimy move, and I hope Spider gets shot. Whatever, back to the story. Spider shoots at them and hits Miklo, but Miklo completely wrecks him with a 420 no scope. <laughs> And hey, I got my wish. Spider got shot. Come on, let's go! So now they're racing to get Miklo to a hospital while the cops are chasing them. And real talk, this car chase hauls ass. Shut up, Frankie! I gotta get him to the hospital, ho! No, I don't wanna go to the hospital! Miklo died there! Man, you shot! What are you worried about, us? Come on, Holmes! Step on it, man! He's getting on us! No gonna chingar! They ain't gonna do shit, Bato! Watch out! The car chase is looking pretty good for the Vato locals and they might actually just make it until they almost hit an abuela and a little kid and swerve and crash. They all bail the hell out of the car, but Paco like a true carnal stays back with the wounded Miklo and they're both caught. Later Miklo enters La Pinta aka prison and he just looks lost and scared while these more feminine prisoners press Miklo. That is until what seems like his chubby brown savior, Popeye, rescues him. Popeye shows Miklo to the rest of the Mexican gang, La Unda, and they also press him too. Mira, tres puntos like spider. Ooh, I'm the boogeyman. He pissed in his pants. <laughs> they leave and Popeye shows Miklo around and what the prison politics around the joint are. So far it seems like Popeye is taking Miklo under his wing and is also going to look out for him. But it just turns out that Popeye wants that old fashioned prison nalga booty tax. Give me some chon chon! Nothing for free in here, punk! Chingato madre! And Popeye almost gets it, but the main jefe and boss of La Unda, Santana, stops him because pimping and stuff like that are too low class for La Unda. And oh, while all this is going on, Cruz finally gets out of the hospital but is now reliant on drugs for his back. Because, well, you know. Also, Paco ended up in the Marines instead of prison and has just recently graduated. But now back to Miklo. At lunch, this Aryan Brotherhood member, Big Al, gives special treatment to Miklo at the lunch line because he's also trying to clap those pasty white cheeks. Yeah. So sick. Yeah. However, Miklo sticks him up and tries to join La Unda while kissing ass to Santana. What do you want? I thought you wanted it. What? My chop. I don't want his pork chop. I want his life. But that's an apple though. Miklo keeps trying to impress Santana so like that he would be allowed into La Unda, but they hit Miklo with that reverse racism card and exclude him because he's white. To which Miklo responds, Chicano's not a color. It's the way you think and the way you live. And if you're willing to give up your life for Carnal. That's kinda true. Just ask Mexican Jewish Cholo Shia LaBeouf. Ah, come on, fool. Good, eh? So in the end, Santana decides that Miklo can join La Onda only if he ends the life of Big Owl. That white dude who's trying to get at Miklo earlier. But if he fails, that'll be the end of Miklo. Respect is everything, Wero. You ready to die for it? Blood in, blood out. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Did you hear what he said? He said the thing. Hang on, let me rewind it. Respect is everything, Wero. You ready to die for it? Blood in, blood out. I told you. Miklo starts to hang out with Big Owl in order to set him up with his own death, but Miklo really buys into the part and starts to really, really, really seduce him. That's kinda sketchy. We then switch to Cruz's art show and see the potential for greatness is starting to rise within him, but Cruz is a dumbass and uses this as an excuse to get wasted with his homies, and almost loses his entire career. <laughs> we are back in prison as days pass and Miklo is working for Albert placing bets and trading goods and all that other stuff, while La Unda preps Miklo to end Big Al the next day. So now it is the big day and Miklo starts to follow and stalk Albert into the storage room thinking that he's alone, but he isn't. There's a corrupt guard getting his cut of the profit and the guard and Big Al spot Miklo and the guard dips while talking shit to Big Al for letting Miklo see this. Big Al then presses Miklo, but Miklo is able to seduce him again and this time really finishes him off. 
I'm gonna lick you clean. Do it, bitch. Lay back and enjoy it. Wait, 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 hold up. I didn't mean it like that. I meant that Miklo ends Big Al's life. After that's done, Miklo gets cleaned up and takes all the cash. And Big Al's black book with important names, dates, bribes, and bets. And he then uses it to bribe and blackmail the corrupt guard into covering his tracks about Big Al's death. We then switch to Cruz's younger brother Juanito barging in on his house and catching Cruz and this other fool, Tuco from Breaking Bad, wasted on the couch. Later once he's knocked out, Juanito tries to be cool like his idiot older brother Cruz and tries to shoot up with a needle, but sadly, it doesn't end too well. Juanito ODs and later on at his funeral, everyone disowns Cruz because it's his fault for Juanito's death because he was such a careless druggie. Back to prison, the white prison gang, the Aryan Brotherhood, are mad at Miklo for killing Big Al. But Launda makes a backhand deal with him, so it's all good. So now Miklo is the new, I don't know what the term is, prison trader, bet keeper, and prison business is good. Popeye later passes his parole interview and asks Miklo for a loan to start a shady business on the outside. And before Popeye leaves prison, they all take that one iconic shot that every wannabe cholo or tryhard gangster has on their Facebook slash Instagram. Uno, dos, tres. And shit, while you're here, might as well like, comment, share, and subscribe. It's now the 1980s and Paco's working as an undercover narc trying to seal the deal on this PCP batch. But it all goes wrong when they feel his wire. PCP is very explosive. Boom. Ooh, mommy. That feels good. Pero cuidado con el chorizo. He's up. He spots Popeye driving around as a shady suspect, and he then chases after them, stops him, arrests everyone in the car, and after that tries to get this dude Smokey to rat, but Smokey doesn't break. And I don't know why, but I feel like I have to point out Smokey's titties. <laughs> like what the actual hell? Them titties are legit C cups. Like no homo. But how's this dude's chest up here and his nipples all the way down here? Huh? We then cut back to Miklo on his parole hearing, but it doesn't go too well. He goes back and talks to Santana about it, and Santana spits out some actual wisdom. And it also seems like he wants a better and more honest life for his people. That ain't right, Karna. No, it's not, but it's that way for too many of us. That's why your parole is so important. You've got to prove there's another way. So we then switch to a studying montage with Miklo bettering himself and it works because he gets released. It's 1982, Miklo is finally out and Cruz drops him off at this halfway house, but it's shitty as hell. And Popeye said he had a place for Miklo to stay at, but he really just screwed him over because this is his new house. Popeye sets up Miklo with a shitty job and is even docking other Launda members for like 30% of their personal check to cover his own losses for that PCP lab. Miklo calls up Baco and tells him how he's trying to walk a straight line and work this all out on his own. It's admirable. However, everyone is basically shitting all over Miklo. Popeye keeps having parties and people keep trying to bang on Miklo's bed. Miklo's boss is docking his own check because Miklo gave him some bad betting advice on a Lakers game. He also blackmails Miklo to keep shut. What? I've been totally straight with you, man. What are you talking about? And on top of that, Popeye keeps trying to make shady business deal inside Miklo's apartment, which might violate his parole. They're trying to set up a shady bank heist with this shady loan shark, but Miklo has had enough and presses Popeye. You got the muscle to jack yourself off. That's it. Oh shit, sick roast. You got the muscle to jack yourself off. Give me some chon chon. Miklo then basically negotiates his way into being part of the heist, and it works. You can kind of say like this is Miklo joining the dark side. No sermon this, I remember. This is who I am. But Miklo's actor keeps switching accents from like this Mexican cholo one to this East Side New Yorker one. Oh yeah, Popeye, I told you no artillery in this place. You want to get these people out of here now? You're out of it, asshole. I'm going to take back my rent money with interest. What? I've been totally straight with you, man. What are you talking about? 
Popeye gets mad because they cut him out of the deal and his whack ass snitches out the heist to Paco. So later Paco and his partner are staking out the heist thinking that it's a drug deal when it's actually, you know, an armed heist. So a pretty decent gunfight ensues. <laughs> One person tries to run away but Baco chases after them and it turns out to be Miklo. Miklo sees that it's Baco and they basically conversate for a bit but Miklo feels like Paco owes him this one so he runs away. But that ain't gonna cut it because Baco shoots his own carnal with his back turned. And well, we'll just have to wait and see what happens in part 2. Hey, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video and hopefully it gets views. I'll try to have part 2 out as soon as I can, but please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And let me know what other Mexican hood film you want me to cover.